please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Our Shri Krishna, the CEO of Hexaware Technologies, also joins us on the show now to talk about that. Shri Krishna, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you know, can you tell us what the expectation is as we head into the new fiscal? Because this year seems like it's been uh, decent for most uh, uh, technology companies. But in terms of uh, the demand, the pricing pressures, etc., what are the trends that you're looking at for the new fiscal? Well, macroeconomics around the world are very solid. Uh, America has been good for a while. Europe has mm -hmm. caught up. Uh, America is threatening to do even better than it did. Um, so, so the demand environment is quite positive. And that's reflected in our expectation for future. I mean, you did say we had a good 2017. We actually had a great 2017. We had, we think, the best performance in the industry, uh, you know, 15.5% revenue growth, 23.5% uh, PAT growth, over 20% EPS growth for the year. Uh, so, so we actually had a great year. And then on the back of that, we expect uh, double-digit growth again. We've guided for a 10 to 12% revenue growth and uh, equivalent EPS growth. Uh, so, so we expect our uh, profitability to be in line with what it is for the full current year. Shri Krishna, good morning. But, but, you know, but, but just a word on the Q4 uh, and the margin performance. That, that was a bit disappointing because the market was expecting 16.6%, .6%, but you delivered 15.8%. So just for Q4, uh, what was the, the issue? Well, you know, we, we, we had guided for many quarters that we're going to have a, a troubled Q4, right? Uh, there are some of our clients which, you know, were in so one client was in sourcing, some other client, some project is going away. So um, in spite of all that, ultimately the guidance we gave for the full year, and we upped the guidance thrice for margin, is that we will grow EBITDA between 165 to 17.5% after ESOP cost. We actually grew it by 17.8%. So... You know, the guidance we gave in Q3, we did better than that in Q4. So I'm, I'm not quite sure where the expectations came from. Okay. At a PAT level, there was a one-off uh, on account of the t U.S. tax reform. We had a little over a million dollars uh, on account of uh, as a one-off cost that we had to write off uh, due to the U.S. tax reforms. But going forward, the tax reforms are positive for us. But that's at a PAT level. Um, for Q4. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, you sounded very positive about the U.S. Uh, 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 environment generally. Uh, what is the revenue guidance you have given for F, uh, uh, for calendar uh, 18? 10 to 12 percent. Okay. Uh, do you see an ability to bill higher or will this all be volume? Well, the history for 2017 is that almost 95% of our revenue growth came from volume. Um, actually, there was a very, about 3% or so was a price reduction. Mm. Now, actually, we see that as a positive, right? Because there is price pressure. There has been price pressure. And in the, in the face of that price pressure, if you didn't have a price reduction, we see that as a positive. Um, Go going forward, we're going to see two different worlds. I think there is going to be a, a world of legacy services where there'll continue to be a little bit price pressure, and how we manage through that is going to be key for profitability. But there are going to be some newer services where we will attract a. We we think we will be able to charge a premium. Okay, so and what part is legacy? What part is uh, non-legacy or cutting edge? Yeah, I mean, literally in each service line, there is a legacy portion okay. and, and there are okay. new portions, okay. right? I mean, if you look at application development, which is our largest business, I mean, if you think of mainframe development support, that would be legacy. But if you think of cloud-first development or, or you know, cloud-based development or full-stack development, those will be uh, more future-facing. Okay. Well, uh, just one final question from my end. Um, what is the exact amount of deal wins that you saw in Q4 and uh, where does that take the total deals or the total order book to? So we, 
announced uh, one rupee per share in Q4, and th that takes the total for the year to four rupees a share. Uh, this is aside f apart from a buyback that we did in we completed in Feb of 2017. Um, for 2018, we've announced that we will return eight rupees a share, and what the mix will be, you know, between dividend and whether we can or should do a buyback is something that we will announce in Q1, okay. uh, a quarter from now. But we've said we are committed to returning eight rupees a share in 2018.